Number five on this list is Stiver's School for the Arts. This is a high school that's attracted hundreds of artistic students from around the region for years. It's apparently a really good school, however, ever since a murder back in the 1920s, it's been deeply haunted. AGC writes, according to the online magazine Dayton Most Metro, a teacher named Mary Tyler was found dead in the pool with a locket in one hand and a broken pointer in the other. The teacher was reportedly involved with a senior student at the time of her death. He disappeared after her body was found and was never seen again. Officials believe the unnamed student tore his picture out of the teacher's locket so nobody would suspect him, according to the writer Julian Heisler. The school eventually covered over the pool, building a classroom on top of it. A trap door still leads down into the pool which is used for storage now, Heisler said, but it seems Mary Tyler never left. Students and maintenance staff have reported Tyler's ghostly figure levitating in the abandoned pool and floating about the lower levels and the network of tunnels buried underneath the school, banging on pipes and wailing loudly wherever she goes, Dayton Most Metro reported. A floating dead body. Yeah, that sounds pretty haunted to me, guys. Ever since this ghostly incident, there have been tons of spooky moments reported by students. Lights flickering, temperature changes, items mysteriously moving around by themselves, and things of this nature happening regularly at this school. It's crazy that something that went down a hundred years ago still has such a hold over this place, but literally a century later, and we still haven't shaken the ghost of Mary's Hyler. Hopefully, the next century is a little bit less scary for the students at Stiver School for the Arts. Number four on this list is the Cleveland Federal Reserve. The Cleveland Federal Reserve is where the money is. Now this isn't a comment on people being haunted by crippling debt, even though that's probably the most realistic thing I've ever said on this channel. No, this place is haunted by an actual poltergeist that you don't want to mess with. Matilda is the name of our ghost in question and she's said to haunt the vault down below. Now the good thing about this place is that you actually can't even get to the haunted area. So even for those of you who are feeling daring, you aren't going to be able to go and visit Matilda because it's off limits to the public. Matilda used to work here and was deeply involved in the stock market. That's why when the market suffered a horrible crash in 1929, Matilda felt trapped and saw no other way than to take her own life. She did so in this building and now it is forever haunted by her spirit passing through the underground walls, scaring all of those who work down there. It's hard to know how accurate this haunting really is because we don't really have any proof of it. That, however, is more due to the fact that it's super off limits and super well guarded vault that nobody can get to. If we can trust the verbal accounts of the people who've run into her, and there have been many, then we should definitely fear this vault. Number three on this list is Crybaby Bridge. This is definitely one of the most famous spots in the state when it comes to hauntings. This one specifically is the Rogue's Hollow Crybaby Bridge and has a pretty sad and scary history. There are two legends that could be true in regards to this bridge. The first one says that the mother of a newborn child had a falling out with her lover. He abandoned her and she fell into a deep depression. She responded by throwing her newborn over the bridge and then followed that by throwing herself over as well. The second legend says that two parents of a newborn child were driving down the road. They got to the bridge and on that bridge their car spun out on some black ice. The car crashed into a tree right after the bridge, killing both of the parents. The baby in the back of the car survived though, at least for a time. This road doesn't get traveled on often and it was very cold that evening. When people eventually did come upon the crash, it was too late. Ever since this incident happened, this bridge has been rightfully avoided by the locals. The horrible sound of a baby crying can be heard echoing throughout the river that it passes over. They say that standing on this bridge for too long, it's not good for your brain or your mental state. That your sanity will slowly slip away from you and any happiness and good feelings that you may have had will be sucked away down that river for good. Not a bridge that you should want to go down at all, so avoid it altogether. Number two on this list is Squire's Castle. So calling this place a castle is a bit of a stretch, because the castle was never actually built. News 5 Cleveland says, located in the North Chagrin Reservation of the Cleveland Metro Parks, this castle is a reflection of the builder Fergus B. Squires, who was a founding member of the Standard Oil Company. The actual castle was never built, so what it's 
standing on today was the shell of the gatekeeper's house for the estate. Legend has it that Fergus' wife, Rebecca, was very much a city girl who wanted nothing to do with nature. Stories say Rebecca was walking up the stone stairs when she became startled by something outside her window. In a panicked state, she dropped her lantern and tumbled to her death down the cold stone staircase. Ever since this tragedy happened, Rebecca's ghost has never left, haunting all of those who visit or stay at the estate and bemoaning her unfortunate fate. The thing is, that she isn't the thing that most people are scared of. It's whatever the thing was that frightened Rebecca so much that she fell to her death. Rumor has it that there could be a werewolf-like beast roaming the estate. Dark red eyes have been seen in the night at a far, and the howls of some wolf-like creature have also been reported. Is it possible that Rebecca saw this werewolf so many Many years ago and that's what frightened her? Maybe she isn't trying to haunt the place at all, but actually trying to scare people away from this place so the same fate doesn't happen to them. Either way, I don't recommend going. And finally, number one on this list is the Lorraine Palace Theater. You know, for once, it would be really nice to go see some theater without fearing for your life. Sadly, you aren't gonna get that at the Lorraine Palace Theater. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution writes, The Lorraine Palace Theater opened in 1928 in Lorraine, Ohio, near Cleveland. It seats just over 1,700 guests and was the first movie theater in the state to show talking pictures, according to the theater's website. Dave Hensley, a paranormal researcher and the founder of EVP mediums told the Chronicle Telegram after investigating the palace that there are so many spirits there he couldn't even count them all. We got a name from a gentleman named Ed who said that he worked at the shipyard. That's profound because the shipyard was directly behind the palace. He claimed that he was murdered, pushed downstairs, Henley said. There was a spirit who said that he died of drugs as well. And we had spirits that were killed in the 1924 tornado that hit Lorraine. That was pretty emotional, one of them said. My body flew, Henslet told the Chronicle. The theater's operation director told the newspaper most people in the area probably know about the ghosts and spirits that roam the palace's hallways. I think everybody in Lorraine County has been privy to the rumors of the unexplained activity in the Lorraine Palace Theater, Chris Pataki said. In fact, a documentary in the Haunted Theater called Ghosts of the Palace is scheduled to debut at the movie house this weekend. Pretty ballsy move right there guys, literally screening a movie about your haunted theater in said haunted theater. All of this though should make it very clear how haunted this place actually is. Literally everybody around this area knows about this spot. And whenever you're getting a full on movie made about how specifically haunted you are, then you know that you've made it as a haunted location. Even though most people make it out of this theater unscathed, that can't be said for everybody. Attacks have been reported and left people feeling very emotionally and even physically scarred. Netflix is a thing for a reason in now guys, let's use it. At number five, the Ohio State Reformatory. The Ohio State Reformatory, a haunting architectural marvel that carries within its walls the echoes of a troubled past. Constructed in the late 19th century, this imposing Victorian Gothic structure was initially intended to embody progressive correctional ideals. However, over time, it became synonymous with stories of despair, shuddering, and unexplained phenomena, solidifying its reputation as one of the most haunted places in the United States. The Reformatory's history is rife with tales of harsh conditions, overcrowding, and the struggles of those who are incarcerated within its confines. These factors, coupled with the tragic stories of inmates who lived and died there, have contributed to the pervasive sense of unease that envelops the site. Visitors often report strange occurrences, such as unexplained footsteps echoing through the empty halls, eerie whispers that seem to float on the air, and chilling cold spots that hint at otherworldly presences. In some cases, there have even been disappearances and killings, alluding to the dark spectral forces that inhabit the reformatory. One of the most famous aspects of the Ohio State Reformatory is its appearance in the movie The Shawshank Redemption. While the film highlighted the reformatory's grim atmosphere, its true history is far richer and more complex. The architecture itself tells a tale of a bygone era, with its intricate detailing and imposing structure standing as a stark contrast to the stories of suffering that unfolded within its walls. Guided tours and events at the reformatory allow visitors to explore its various sections, from the imposing cell blocks to the eerie solitary confinement area, known as the Hole, creating an immersive experience that evokes a sense of timelessness. The stark contrast between the ornate exterior and the haunting interior serves as a poignant reminder of the complex and often troubling history that defines the reformatory. While some may dismiss claims of paranormal activity as mere superstition, the stories and experiences recounted by those who have visited the Ohio 
Ohio State Reformatory are difficult to ignore. The combination of a somber history, decaying architecture, and the mysterious ambience that permeates the air makes for an unforgettable experience that lingers long after the visit is over. Number 4. Molly Stark Sanatorium The former Molly Stark Hospital, located in Molly Stark Park in Ohio, is a haunting relic of a bygone era. Once a treatment center for tuberculosis patients, the decaying building exudes a ghoulish aura, with vines snaking over ancient brick, shattered windows, and faded stone. Closed for over two decades, the hospital's dilapidated state has attracted ghost hunters and paranormal enthusiasts, leading to the erection of a barbed wire fence to deter trespassers. Owned by the Stark County Park District, the property offers public tours to its exterior, revealing intricate architectural details and a fascinating history. The hospital, originally constructed in 1929, at a cost of around a million dollars, treated tuberculosis patients until the 1970s, and later served as a mental health facility and a rehabilitation center for those suffering with addiction. The tour provides insights into the hospital's architectural flourishes, including a portico and stone carved religious symbols, reflective of the faith that played a role in caring for those afflicted by tuberculosis. The hospital's conditions quickly began to decline in the mid 1970s after reports of ghost sightings within the hospital. Patients and staff alike bore witness to the likes of victims of tuberculosis, despite the fact that treatment for the illness was invented 20 years prior. These now deceased patients were known to disrupt medical examinations, cause mass hysteria among patients and staff, and even cause many disappearances within the hospital. The amount of distress these apparitions caused eventually led to the hospital's closure in 1995. Nowadays, the site's haunted reputation draws curiosity seekers, but the tour focused mostly on the building's history rather than the many ghosts that still scuffle about the old hospital. Hospital. And number three, South Base Island Lighthouse. Perched atop the rugged cliffs of South Base Island in Put In Bay, the historic lighthouse stands as both a beacon of maritime history and a portal to a realm of ghostly legends. The South Base Island Lighthouse, with its iconic red brick tower and majestic views of Lake Erie, cast a haunting silhouette against the ever changing skies, drawing visitors from far and wide who seek to unravel the mysteries that have enshrouded this hallowed site for decades. Built in 1897, the South Base Island Lighthouse served as a vital navigational aid for ships traversing the treacherous waters of Lake Erie. Its light guided sailors through storms and fog, ensuring safe passage to the shores. However, as time marched on and technology advanced, the lighthouse's significance diminished, eventually leading to its decommissioning in the mid-20th century. But as darkness descends upon the island, the lighthouse takes on an air of malevolence. The wind howls like the mournful wails of lost souls, while the crashing waves below create a symphony of despair. Those brave enough to step inside confront an unsettling stillness, punctuated only by the occasional creak of floorboards under an invisible, unrelenting force. Phantom shadows dance along the walls. There are ethereal forms casting an ominous dance that defies explanation. Visitors recount harrowing tales of icy fingers brushing against their skin, of ghostly whispers that worm their way into their minds, and of an overpowering sense of dread that lingers long after they've fled the premises. The lighthouse had to be shut down after several reports of it turning off at random times, or guiding sailors towards dangerous areas, despite being completely unmanned. One can only assume that this mischief was the work of the spirits that haunt the lighthouse. This forsaken lighthouse has earned its place among the most terrifying locales in Ohio, a reputation upheld by relentless tales of ghostly apparitions, unexplainable phenomena, and an atmosphere so saturated with maleficent energy that it leaves visitors trembling in its wake. Whether driven by morbid curiosity or a thirst for the macabre, those who dare to cross the threshold into the South Base Island Lighthouse do so at their own peril. For here, in the heart of the lighthouse's labyrinthine corridors, the boundary between the living and the spectral blurs, and the chilling embrace of the unknown reaches out to ensnare those who dare to seek it. And at number two, Moonville Tunnel. Deep within the remote woods of southeastern Ohio lies a sinister enigma shrouded in darkness the Moonville Tunnel. This desolate and haunted passage, long abandoned by the living, stands as a portal to a realm where reality intertwines with the supernatural, and where the unwary may find themselves vanishing into the void if they dare to tread too close. The Moonville Tunnel, a vestige of an era past, was once a vital conduit for a long forgotten railway. Yet, as time eroded the tracks and decay seeped into its very stones, a chilling transformation occurred. Stories of ghastly apparitions and eerie encounters have swirled around the tunnel, like the mist that clings to its mouth. Tales whispered among locals with a mixture of dread and fascination. Daredevil adventurers who have ventured into the tunnel speak of an oppressive, tangible malevolence that envelops the air, an unrelenting presence that seems to watch, to wait, 
and to hunger for the unsuspecting. Perhaps the most sinister tale is that of the Moonville Tunnel's insatiable appetite for souls. It is said that if you step foot into the tunnel around 3 a.m., when the boundaries between worlds are at their thinnest, you may never step back out. Foolhardy wanderers who venture into its depths during the witching hour risk becoming mere specters themselves, forever trapped in a twilight realm of torment and despair. The tunnel's history is steeped in tragedy, adding to its ominous aura. Legends tell of a brakeman who met a grisly end beneath the wheels of an oncoming train, his anguished spirit now condemned to roam the dark expanse. Others speak of mournful phantom cries that pierce the silence, echoing the heart-wrenching despair of a long-lost soul. Visitors who dare to challenge the Moonville Tunnel's eerie reputation tread a perilous path. As the moonlight filters through the dense canopy, casting ghostly shadows upon the tunnel's yawning maw, a feeling of being washed intensifies. Footsteps echo with an eerie resonance, their sound swallowed by the blackness ahead. Time itself seems to warp, stretching and distorting reality as though beckoning the unwary to step beyond the veil. To approach the Moonville Tunnel is to court danger, to teeter on the precipice of the unknown. It is a place where the boundary between the living and the dead blurs, where the rules of our reality are subverted by forces beyond comprehension. As the wind whispers secrets and the very earth seems to hold its breath, those who venture too close may find themselves joining the ranks of the vanished, a chilling testament to the dark and untamed forces that linger within the haunted confines of Moonville Tunnel. Coming in at number one, Franklin Castle. Franklin Castle, an imposing Victorian mansion nestled in the heart of Cleveland, Ohio, stands as an enigmatic edifice brimming with dark secrets and eerie tales that have earned it a reputation as one of the most haunted houses in America. With its intricate architecture, turrets, and ornate details, the castle's exterior belies the chilling stories that have swirled around it for generations. Built in the late 19th century by German immigrant and banker Hans Tiedemann, the Franklin Castle was intended to be a symbol of prosperity and opulence. However, as time passed, the mansion's grandeur began to fade, replaced by rumors of tragedy, scandal, and paranormal activity that would come to define its legacy. The Tiedemann family was plagued by a series of untimely deaths, including the passing of several youngsters and Tiedemann's wife. The pervasive aura of grief seemed to seep into the very walls of the castle, fostering an atmosphere of melancholy and despair. It is said that the spirits of the deceased still linger within its chambers, their presence felt by those who dare to venture inside. Over the years, reports of ghostly apparitions, disembodied voices, and unexplained phenomena have only added to the castle's haunted mystique. Visitors and paranormal enthusiasts alike have recounted chilling experiences, from encountering spectral figures that vanish into thin air, to hearing whispers that seem to drift from empty rooms. Cold spots and sudden drops in temperature are often attributed to the presence of otherworldly entities. And of course, the few unlucky folks who, seemingly out of random, would receive the same curse as Tiedemann all those years ago. The castle's haunted reputation has been further fueled by the stories of secret passageways, hidden rooms, and a mysterious woman in black who is said to roam the halls. These elements, combined with the mansion's unsettling history, have led to countless investigations by ghost hunters and paranormal experts seeking to unlock its mysteries. Number five on this list is the legend of Walhalla Road. Walhalla Road is actually quite a beautiful road in central Ohio. It is very long, starting out as a suburb street and then eventually transitioning into a very skinny one-way road in the middle of what feels like nowhere. As you may expect, our legend takes place in the skinny, abandoned one-way section of this road. The story says that in the 1950s, there was a couple that lived in a home along Walhalla Road out in the country. Now, no one is really sure what prompted the husband to do this, whether he had just gone insane or if the wife had done something that he did not approve of, but one evening he totally lost it. He grabbed the axe from the garage and brutally murdered his wife in the attic of their home. The whole story gives me some serious Jack Nicholson in The Shining type of vibes. After he had killed her, he took her body and he buried it at nighttime in the yard. Now they weren't completely in the middle of nowhere and did have some neighbors in the area. After several weeks of not seeing the wife and strange explanations from the husband, the neighbors called the police and the truth was revealed. The man was then easily tried, convicted and sentenced to execution. After his death though, people started reporting seeing him around the area. When they reported this, nobody took it very seriously considering it had been big news when he was sentenced to death and everybody had heard about it. More and more sightings came out though and it was always the same story. They could see along the side of the road ghostly apparitions of the husband who was killing his wife. Almost as if the scene was getting played over and over and over again. 
The locals now swear that if you head down that road and get to the one way, then it's very possible that you will see the ghost of our murderer replaying the killing of his wife. Number four on this list is the Lizard Men. Now this is certainly a strange one, but honestly it's one of the biggest urban legends that Ohio has to offer. The legend can be traced all the way back to 1955 where it was reported that a traveling salesman spotted these strange looking creatures. Now this story sounds a little bit ridiculous to me if I'm being completely honest, but apparently three lizard like creatures that are roughly three feet tall were standing on their hind legs having a full on conversation. When the man pulled up to them and couldn't believe his eyes because it's literally these three foot lizards talking to each other, they whipped out a magic wand and then used their magic wand to conjure some sparks which provided them with enough cover to then run away. Now frankly, that part of the story sounds a lot more like my traveling salesman buddy was dipping a little bit too deep into the drink or potentially some other illegal substances, but some of the other encounters that people have reported having with these beings aren't quite as outlandish. In 1972 for instance, a police officer was driving his car by the Little Miami River and in his headlights saw a very large creature sprint across the road and leap off a bridge into the river. He was totally blown away and said that the being was nothing like he has ever seen, painting the picture of a unique lizard-like man when he described it. Throughout the years there have been a lot more sightings of the lizard creatures by Little Miami River similar to that of the police officer. Up to this point there haven't been any deaths or harm that has befallen on the people that have come across this creature or creatures, so it isn't necessarily too scary, but I had to include it on this list simply due to the amount of sightings that people have had and how popular of an urban legend it is to the Ohio locals. Number three on this list is the legend of the hatchet man. Back in the 1800s there was a man named Andrew Hellman who owned and operated a cemetery. One evening Andrew was finishing up his business outside and he was savagely attacked by an unknown assailant. The attacker had a hatchet and used it to cut Andrew's body up into little tiny pieces. This clearly wasn't enough for the killer though who then took all of these little bits of Andrew and scattered them around the entire cemetery. Andrew was a nice man and didn't deserve this at all and he definitely didn't deserve for his soul to get trapped in limbo like it is right now. Legend says that Andrew's spirit still wanders through this cemetery and has completely lost its mind. People have reported hearing the sound of somebody banging a hatchet on gravestones throughout the cemetery, screaming at the top of their lungs as they do it. It has also been reported that they have discovered hatchet scrapings on the tombstones in this cemetery as if somebody has slammed a hatchet on them as hard as they could. Some locals even believe that Andrew's ghost or or hatchet man is so far gone that it has begun killing people. That if you are out in this cemetery late at night and alone, the hatchet man's spirit will appear and if you see him, then this is the last thing that you will do because you will be murdered by the hatchet man. Number one on this list is the portal to hell. Located in Blue Ash, Ohio, the portal to hell is a very eerie looking drain tunnel that was reportedly used by Satanists to open up a gateway straight to hell. The exact story of how the portal was created, it isn't completely concrete, but for the most part everybody agrees that a satanic group used part of the tunnel as a meeting ground. It was in this tunnel that they started performing their satanic rituals. They reportedly used this place for a lot of sacrifices and would slaughter live animals down there very frequently. This escalated until they made a full on portal to hell that nobody is closed. People in the area regularly report hearing screaming coming from down inside the tunnel with others saying that they've seen strange visuals and movements as well. David Scott and John Stevens who run a show about paranormal activity got wind of the portal to hell and had to go check it out for themselves to see if the rumors were true. From what they had heard there was a demon called the shadow man that was lurking deep inside the tunnels near the altar room where the satanists used to sacrifice the bodies. When they go down into the tunnel, for the first bit, everything is as it should be. It's still a super creepy tunnel, but nothing paranormal. Then as they're super deep into the tunnel, they begin to hear footsteps coming from behind them in the darkness. Being paranormal professionals, they pull out this strange looking electronic device and start asking questions to it. Sure enough, a voice comes back to them. They go on to have a full conversation with this voice and learn that a man named Jake was murdered down here. 
The voice goes on to tell them that the tunnel is a prison and that they must worship Satan here. It also tells them that the shadow man is real and is currently down here with them. The conversation finishes with the voice basically claiming that it wants to leave this horrible place and that it is trapped down here. I'm not sure how real their interaction was with this voice, but with the history that this tunnel has had and the amount of people who have had reported sightings of beings and other odd, unexplained things, something is definitely not right about that tunnel or the portal to hell in Blue Ash, Ohio. Number five on this list is the House of Wills, a historic mansion with a deep history and an even deeper haunting. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution says it was built in 1898 by the Germania Trevernian Social Club, according to the website of the current owner, Cleveland artist Eric Freeman. By 1912, it was turned into the Hospital for Immigrants, and by 1920, it housed the Cleveland Hebrew Institute until 1938, prominent African-American entrepreneur and businessman John Walker Wills bought the property in 1942 to use as the location for his second funeral parlor. Wills died in the home in 1971 and his family sold it in 2005. The home fell into disrepair until Freeman bought it in 2010 and started the challenging work of restoring and renovating the property. Freeman said on his website that Wills is believed to be one of the many ghosts that haunt the house and on his Facebook page he posted a scary electronic voice phenomena or EVP recording from the house of what sounds like dozens of of spirits from beyond trying to be heard by the living. There have actually been some famous paranormal investigators that have looked into this mansion before and they all came to the same conclusion. It's haunted. A swirling mist will occasionally appear in the mansion, followed by stark temperature changes and a horribly foreboding sensation. Visitors who've stayed at this mansion for extended periods of time say that the visit changed them. That they're sort of constantly on alert after that stay, as if they're hyper aware all of the time. Unless you're trying to feel anxious literally all of the time, I'd book another place to stay if I was you. Number four on this list is the Seely Rose House. This house is located in the Malabar Farm State Park, which is in Richland County. To this day, it's still a working farm, which is kind of shocking considering the horrible tragedy that occurred here many years ago. Seely Rose is actually the name of a person, a young girl who lived in the late 1800s. This girl wasn't innocent and sweet as the stereotypical farm gal is. She was evil. There used to be a neighbor house right nearby the Seely Rose house, and in that home lived a young boy around the same age as Seely. Seely developed quite the crush on him and wanted to marry him. It seemed that he liked her as well, and he wanted to do the same. This was all fine and good, except her family wouldn't allow it. Seely's family forbid her from marrying this boy, and this was what caused her to do what she did next. Seely wouldn't accept this answer and took it on herself to get rid of the problem, her family. She poisoned them. Every single one of them. She did it by soaking flypaper in water and then secretly pouring the arsenic-laced water over the cottage cheese she served them, according to Ohio State Park News. They all died soon afterwards, except for her. This was soon found out by the authorities, and Seely, being as young as she was, wasn't sent to jail, but she was put into a mental institute. She was there until she died many, many years later. This home is supposedly still haunted by her and the ghost of her dead family, though. Scratches and eerie cracks are heard throughout all the time. Many people have reported being attacked while they're here as well. Avoid this home at all costs if you find yourself in Ohio. Number two on this list is the Gore Orphanage. Anything that is named the Gore Orphanage is bound to be haunted, and this is no exception. News 5 Cleveland says it's claimed to be one of the most haunted places in Ohio. Located in the countryside of Vermilion, a fire engulfed an old orphanage, burning dozens of of people alive, according to long-told tales. For over a century, visitors to the Gore Orphanage have reported strange experiences of glowing lights, chilling cries, and apparitions. Light of Hope was the actual name of the orphanage and was established by Johann Sprunger and his wife Katrina. They moved to the Vermilion area after their two former businesses in Indiana also caught fire. Throughout the years, children told stories of a 
neglect, and slave labor conditions. In 1909, an investigation was conducted, but because the state had no laws or regulations pertaining to orphanages, nothing could formally be done to prosecute the couple. While there's no proof that any deaths actually did occur, there's still little doubt about its reputation for being one of the most haunted areas in Ohio. So, not only did this place suffer a horrible tragedy where several people passed away during a massive blaze, but prior to that even happening, there seemed to be so many human rights violations going on. I have no idea how back in the day the state wouldn't have had any laws pertaining to orphanages, but it just shows how back then these operations and children were so neglected. Because of all this tragedy and just general sadness, we have what stands today, a horribly haunted, abandoned old orphanage. Now this is on the list of places not to go, and that's because it is actually very dangerous to do so. The ghosts here are upset, and interacting with them will be a huge strain on your mind. However, if you are feeling strong enough, then I actually do encourage you to go. The only way these spirits will finally find a peace is if they finally get the attention from the public that they deserve. Something that clearly this place didn't get while it was in operation. Coming in at number five, we have the Werewolf of Defiance. During the summer of 1972, the people of Defiance claimed they were being terrorized by a werewolf. On July 25th, 1972, Ted Davis, a railroad worker, noticed something strange. He saw two hairy, huge paws on the ground in front of him. Confused and likely scared, he slowly raised his eyes and saw before him a creature at least six feet tall, hunched over and holding a large wooden board. Before Ted had a moment to react, he hit Ted on the shoulder and ran away. Just a few days after Ted and his colleagues spotted the return of the unknown creature, and again in the next following day, there was another report. A panic began to spur through the town and newspapers about the strange sightings. With all the sightings, it was agreed that the werewolf was large and humanoid. There were enough reports that the Defiance Ohio Police Department had to open an investigation into werewolves in the area. It is even reported in the various newspapers in Ohio. Eventually, after days of looking with no result, the case was closed. Many people thought it was a prank, but during this experience, people were actually afraid that there were either a creature or some individual dressing up and attacking people. The sightings always happened at night, generally by the train tracks. A couple of women said it would try to get into their houses by rattling the doorknobs. The animal was said to be huge, hairy, and dressed in rags. In at number three, we have melon heads. Melon heads is the name given to the urban legend of human-like beings that live in the forests of Michigan, Connecticut, and Ohio. Ohio. The melon heads were originally abandoned children that a scientist by the name of Dr. Crow decided to take care of at his facility in Kirtland, Ohio. While the children stayed at the facility, Dr. Crow performed experiments. What got them the name melon heads was when Dr. Crow injected chemicals into their brains, which caused their craniums to grow abnormally large. Because of the abnormal growth, they developed hydrocephalus, which caused them to become mentally ill. After years of neglect, the melon heads ended Dr. Crow's life and burned down his facility. After the death of the mad scientist Dr. Crow, the Melonheads decided to inhabit the forest of Crybaby Bridge. To survive, the Melonheads feast on any animals that they hunted down. Because of their paranoia of society, the Melonheads ate anyone that spotted them. To keep the Melonheads cult going, they've kept inbreeding, making the offspring even more raving and paranoid. Legend holds that the Melonheads reside in Wisner Road in Kirtland and Chardon Township, with locals and bypassers reported seeing and hearing the Melonheads as they lurk in the forest looking for for their next victim. Local law depicts them as a territorial and angry, responsible for attacks, kidnappings, and theft of pets and livestock for food. An explorer even wrote a book about the first person encounter with Melonhead. Kelly Top Predosian claims that she was exploring the grounds of the then abandoned Felt Mansion and her friends one night when she saw a small human in the distance. They had an unusually large head, but she wasn't scared. Then he started walking towards them. In at number two, we have Myrtle Hill Cemetery. Residing in Cleveland, Ohio, the Myrtle Hill Hill Cemetery is one mysterious and scary resting place. This legend starts with a three foot round granite memorial that pays homage to a witch by the name of Stoskopf. Local legends explain that old lady Stoskopf murdered her family and tossed them in a well. When the townsfolk discovered the grisly truth, they sentenced her to death. When she was buried, she was buried standing up, and a massive grain stone was placed above her to weigh her spirit down. Though 
that being said, the legend was likely inspired by the real life slayings carried out by Martha Wise. Martha poisoned her family's water supply and ultimately killed three family members, only a mere mile away from where the witch's ball stands today. Early on, Wise claimed the devil made her do it, with the plain dealer reporting more than 125 witnesses were called to testify to Wise's insanity, stating that sometimes she barked like a dog and frothed at the mouth, that she wandered the woods at night and caught several barns on fire. Wise served most of the rest of her life in Marysville Reformatory, where she died at 89 in 1971. Although she's buried in Marysville, her victims are all buried within a couple of hundred feet of the Stoskopf Spherical Monuments, which wasn't installed, according to local residents, until at least the early 1940s. Locals say that if you touch the stone at night and it's warm, it means that the witch has escaped and she's on the hunt for her next victim. Many can't help but believe that the cemetery itself is haunted, and out of curiosity, many people visit the cemetery and trespass at night to try to interact with its resident spirits. And finally, in at number one, we have Rogue's Hollow. From the tales of a haunted mill and a cryberry bee bridge to a shaking graveyard and a headless horseman, Rogue's Hollow is known to be one of Ohio's most haunted areas. You can explore the park today, just be sure to stay away after dark, as that's when the ghosts come out to play. Ohio Rogue's Hollow was once a populated mining village, but very few remnants of the coal mining town remain now. The town was actually once a place notorious for outlaws and gangsters to hide out. Shootouts and robberies were common here, and these continued until the early 20th century. In spite of the town's crooked reality and a peculiar tale, creepy things continue to happen here. There have been multiple reports of sounds of a crying baby at night, shaking grounds at a graveyard, and ghost sightings that haunt the abandoned town. The abandoned mines around Rogue's Hollow are full of ghosts of miners who perish there in cave-ins and accidents, with the reports of tools being picked up by unseen hands in the black shafts chipping away at veins of coal. Though the entrance to the mine has been permanently blocked, and the walkway near the mine shafts are equally plagued by residents of the spirit world. One old legend that haunts the town is of the Chidester Mill ghost. The ghost was believed to belong to a mill worker who fell into the wheel and was crushed beneath the churning waves. The ghost guarded the area and is filled with jealousy and spite. Because of the negative energy this ghost brings, he supposedly started a fire in the Chidester house when an outsider expressed interest in purchasing it. A more modern legend is the Crybaby Bridge. At the bottom of the hollow, a bridge crosses Silver Creek. According to legend, a car traveling across the bridge slid on ice and plunged into the creek. Its occupants were no longer alive. Today, you can hear the cries being heard from the surrounding woods. There are an endless amount of ghost stories circulating about the old mining town of Rogue's Hollow, with eyewitnesses reported seeing women in frontier dresses, hearing old trains, crying, and floating tools, leaving us even more certain in the belief of ghosts and spirits. Number five on this list is Cleveland Gray's Armory Museum. This building was constructed in 1893 for the Cleveland Grays, who were a volunteer private military company. The group helped law enforcement and dealt with other criminal ongoings that attacked the city's streets. They continued helping out the military for as long as the government would allow them to, but after World War I, were no longer allowed to enter as a private group. However, they obviously had a lot of weapons and things of that nature that nobody would be using anymore. So today, there now stands the Cleveland Grays Armory Museum. These guns and cannons don't stand alone though, as there are ghosts living among these walls as well. Disembodied voices and things moving when they're not supposed to are all very common occurrences at the Cleveland Grays Armory Museum. The legend actually became so famous that this place was featured on Ghost Hunters, where they investigated the building and determined that this place is in fact haunted. However, luckily for us, and a reason why you still might be able to go to this place, is that the ghosts are supposedly out there for a good time. These professionals determined that the ghosts are not fueled by anger, but just chilling out in the museum and living their best ghostly lives. Still though, there are many apparitions of military men who will appear, as well as ghostly footsteps and sounds that just don't make any sense at all. It's all very creepy, even if the ghosts are only out for fun. It would probably be a pretty cool place to check out, just make sure that you aren't faint of heart. Number four on this list is Erie Street Cemetery. This is apparently one of the spookiest places in the state, and not a spot 
thought that you should want to be burying your loved ones. Only in your state writes, in 1826, this charming cemetery was established on East 9th Street, though it was known as Erie Street at the time. Before then, a community burial ground was maintained near modern day Public Square. Expansion, of course, eventually caught up with the cemetery, and it's now right across the street from Progressive Field. This growth once threatened the cemetery's existence as bodies were removed from the cemetery in the early 1900s to make space for the new development. This preparation was shut down when the Pioneers Memorial Association was founded, so the burial grounds remains, yet it now feels oddly out of place. Perhaps one of the most unforgettable stories is that of Jock Osot, also known as Walking Bear. Jock Osot was the proud chief of the Meskekai, a tribe that existed in Iowa. Following the conclusion of the Black Hawk War, Jock Osok came out east to hunt. He made the acquaintance of Dan Marvel and joined his theater troupe, traveled to England, and even came into the favor of Queen Victoria. However, he fell ill and parted ways with the troop. Legend maintains that Jock Osot was making his way home to his ancestral lands, anticipating his demise, but that he passed in Cleveland before he reached his intended destination. As a result, local myth maintains Jock Osot remains eternally restless. His local friends like Dr. Horace Ackley arranged for his burial in Erie Street Cemetery. His dismay at being unable to return home caused him to crack his stone grave marker. This ghost has been spotted so many times and haunts those who pass by here. He's even said to haunt the Cleveland Guardians baseball park which is just across the street from this cemetery. His ghost is forever restless and just wants to get home but I'm not sure that he ever will though. Number 3 on this list is South Bass Island Lighthouse. Located in South Bass Island on Lake Erie, this lighthouse and the island it's on is honestly rather beautiful. Super cute and super quaint, it's kind of like the place that you'd want to go for a day trip with your significant other. However, you may not want to take said significant other to the South Bass Lighthouse itself. It housed lighthouse keepers in the late 1800s. The weirdness began back in 1898 with Harry Riley, the lighthouse keeper, and his assistant, Sam Anderson. Anderson was a bit of a weirdo. He was said to have captured snakes on the island and then bring them to the basement of the lighthouse, where he kept a bunch of them. Anderson apparently lost his mind though during the time that he worked at this place. Apparently there was a small epidemic and he freaked out at the prospect of having to stay in quarantine. Triggering a little bit? It's thought that he took his own life by jumping off of the cliff portion of the island. Then later on, the lighthouse keeper Harry was found hopelessly mad running around the island like a lunatic. It was the two stories of these men that launched the legends of a haunting at this lighthouse. People are very scared of the lighthouse as they believe it to be haunted with some sort of demon that will make you go insane. A lovely and quaint little spot, but one that if you spend too much time at will literally have you lose your mind. Not to mention, the ghosts of these two men have been spotted from time to time running around frantically looking as if all their wits are totally gone. Number 2 on this list is Edwin Shaw Hospital. Edwin Shaw Hospital has truly seen it all and it's no wonder that it's deeply haunted today. It initially opened in 1915 as a hospital specifically for tuberculosis. Then a few years later a side wing opened up to care for pediatric patients. Needless to say, during these periods there was a lot of death that took place. Then in 1947 things changed drastically and became a place for abandoned children, those who lost their parents or those who suffered for the next few years of this place's operation, there were a decent amount of scandals that took place. Tons of reports of mistreatment of these children, with some patients even taking their own lives during this time. Eventually, this became a psychiatric hospital as well, and as you can probably imagine, it saw its fair share of human rights violations and scary things. Now, this place is no more, it's completely demolished, but the area is still deeply haunted. Ohio Exploration went prior to its demolition in 2017 and saw its haunted nature firsthand. They write, Of course, with such a rich and diverse history, it is no surprise that Edwin Shaw was said to be haunted. The spirits of not only the tuberculosis victims, there are 246 buried in the hospital cemetery, but also of those children who took their own lives and those who fell victim to ill fates were said to haunt the hospital and its grounds. Doors opened and closed by themselves and sounds of spectral footsteps were often heard in the halls. The sounds of a meal being served in the mess hall were heard quite frequently, but upon inspection, the hall was completely empty. Ghostly humming and other odd sounds were heard in Sunshine Village, where the bulk of the paranormal activity was said to take place. Be very careful, guys, of this place in Ohio.